This is the Coach's Wife Life Podcast. I'm Kristen Ergel, your host, a former TV sports reporter and fellow college football coach's wife. I'll go one-on-one with the strong women who are the backbone of college athletics and athletics of all levels. And now, Coach's Wife Life. This podcast is brought to you by Ruler of Hope. Ruler of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Ruler Hope or online at rulerofhope.org. Hey there, I'm Chris Nerlon. We have an exciting podcast ahead. But first, I want to talk about something we all know way too much about moving. Just the thought of that can bring an unsettling emotion. Well, I found a team that can take that load off your plate. It's D1 Relocation. This group can do it all. They can organize your move, coordinate with a moving company, and a trusted real estate agent. They can actually vet key household partners, such as schools, insurance agents, physicians in the area. They can even help set up your Wi-Fi and water. It's incredible. So I've come to know this team, which is actually founded by a coach's wife. I think you should check it out. Whether you're looking to move now or in the future, it's d1relocation.com. Now on to our awesome podcast. Well, it is my honor to bring Brittany Shaw on the podcast. She is the wife of John Shaw, assistant sports performance coach, speed training for the Tennessee Titans. I said it, NFL. Brittany, thank you so much for being a part of us. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and just to talk to you. I know. I'm going to catch up with you. We were on staff together for the at the Kansas Jayhawks. You've had a fun life since then. You are in the middle of a big transition, coast to coast here. Let's run through the bio a little bit, and then we'll talk about the, the big excitement thing going on right now. You started at Bellhaven. Then you went high school, Germantown High School in Mississippi, St. Paul in Mobile, made the jump to the Kansas Jayhawks. This is where we met. And then Missouri, Arizona, Washington for a quick minute. (laughs) And you are headed now to the Titans. When you look at that, what an incredible road that you have had. What do you think makes your husband special? Um, I just think the speed part, you know, obviously is his, that's his life, but The uniqueness of him is that the love he has for the players and the way he can talk to people. Um, This world is all about who you know and the uniqueness and just the sincerity that you have, I feel like. And he is all about getting to know people and talking to people. And that's his life. I, I just feel like he wants to get to know who you are. And I feel like that him being so genuine, people love it and they gravitate towards him. And then of course, you know, the speed life that he does. And I feel like he's the best in the country. Um, I mean, you know, I'm his wife and I can say that, but I just feel like everything that he does, he has done it himself. And so I just feel like, you know, a lot of, a lot of coaches may tell you what to do, but they don't actually do and and train it and and do that part of it but he does he likes to go out and make sure that what he's teaching and coaching is is valuable you're at arizona then you get the call that you're going to washington and i want you to pick up this story at this point here tell me what it's like to get the call from an nfl team to interview and to know you have the job it's just exciting um You know, you you get calls a lot, and I don't say that to be boastful at all, Um, but we are always in prayer about where we should be, where our assignment is. This is a ministry for us. It's not just a job. We are here to minister and, you know, to to be here for these kids and now grown men. Um, We've never been in the NFL, so I don't know what that will be like, but I know this is where God has called us. we stepped out on faith to move all the way to Washington and we're from Alabama. So we have not been near family in six to seven years and we have four kids. So it's a little crazy to think about, but just hearing him say, Hey, someone call from the Titans. And we had just got to our house. We had been in our house 15 days in Washington when we got that call. And so, you know, stop unpacking boxes and, see where this life is going to take us and it and it has taken us to Tennessee and we're excited to to go and to see what it's like 
And you will be closer to home. Alabama is the home state, not too far from Nashville. So where did you grow up? I know some of these stories, but <laughs> I'm excited to share it with the world. So where did you grow up? And did you ever envision this life, especially when you're coaching at St. Paul's and go, yeah, one day we'll beat the Titans. I mean, did you foresee this going through like this? I did. But I'm also, you know, I played college sports and I've I've lived this life my whole life. And so we love it. It's it's all we know. And so I did. I, I knew once he came to me and he said that he wanted to pursue college, that I was going to be right there by him. And, you know, we were going to pray and walk this life together. And that's what we've done. I mean, it's exciting. We love it. I love going to different places. I don't love the moving part. Nobody does. But Seeing all these different places that we wouldn't see otherwise. Um, I love it. Very, very special. Okay. How did you meet? We met. We have been together since 2001. That seems like a lifetime and it has been. Um, we met on AOL Instant Messenger. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I seem so old saying that. Um, and then we met through a mutual friend. We met through a mutual friend that was his best friend from church and then one of my close friends from school. And so that's how we actually, you know, met in person. But we talked for about six months on the phone before we had ever seen each other, just getting to know each other's personalities. And I've loved him since then. That's It's been a long time. That's awesome. Okay. And then you get married a few years later. Um, did you ever see yourself as a coach's wife? You did envision this life. Did. Um, and you saw this playing out. When you think about your thoughts on being a coach's wife and then actually living it, what, what, you know, what was surprising to you? Anything or, or you kind of were aware of it because of being a student athlete? Um, I think both, like you're aware of what's going on and we've both done, you know, played college sports. So you, we've lived this life just on the other side. Um, I don't think that I really truly understood the moves and what that would be like, um, you know, you you get to a place and sometimes you're there for what, six weeks like we are here in Washington. And then sometimes you're at a place for three plus years and the connections that you make, it's hard to leave. Um, I had a very tough time leaving Arizona. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of other boys. We have four kids, but all of those boys were my other kids. And it was very hard to leave them, and especially once they announced that they weren't going to transfer with us, um, it makes it hard because the NCAA makes it hard because you're not allowed to speak to them anymore um, or you're breaking rules. And so you form those relationships, and then you ultimately have to just leave. And so I think that makes it, you know, hard. And you have four beautiful children. Tell me about your kids. We have Jace, who is 11, just turned 11. We have Asher, who is eight. Well, he'll be eight in two weeks. Shiloh, who's three, our little diva, Sassy. And then Roman, the little sweetest little guy, and he is one. Wow. I yeah. mean, you have your hands full. Are you working right now? I am not. Once we, um, once we had Shiloh, I took a break. And then 12 months later, we found out we were pregnant with Roman, which is a whirlwind because... It took us three years to have Shiloh. So to find out that we were pregnant with Roman was a total shock, but I wouldn't change it for the world. But no, I, I have not been able to go back to work, hopefully eventually. But right now my life is taking care of littles and taking care of my husband. So and I'm sure you are enjoying this season of your life, even though I'm sure it feels absolutely chaotic right now. You're still living in boxes. Yes. Um, there's challenges that come with some of the opportunities for sure. Right. Yes. Let's talk about some of those moments in your life um, that you had to really rely on something that you couldn't see how this would pan out, that it wasn't the best day, um, the day that you're getting a call from the Titans. What would you say are some of those big moments for you, some of the toughest adversity and what did you rely on to get through those moments? Well, um, first of all, we always rely on God. God has us in the palm of his hands and he knows exactly where we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing from the get go. And so, yes, you know, you start questioning and you're like, why is this happening right now? It's not the best time. I mean, our stuff was still in storage in Phoenix because our rent was up in Arizona. And so they, you know, we didn't want to do like month to month because it was going to skyrocket. 
Right. And so the rental, co- not the rental company, the moving company came and packed us up and put our stuff in storage until we found a house in Washington. And so we had just got our stuff here. And I was like, God, wh- why would you do all of this to turn around and have them, us have to pack it all up again? What's not already, you know, packed and go all the way across country. But when I sit there and think about it, I'm like, he's always faithful. He's always faithful. You know, we have always been praying about where we're supposed to be, what our assignments up, what where our assignment is. I've, I've told you that earlier. And we have always been praying to be closer to family. And I was like, God, why do you keep pushing us closer to the West Coast? And there's always a reason, always a reason. But now just seeing God's faithfulness and us taking a leap of faith, moving our family to Washington for, you know, a couple of weeks and now moving back to to Tennessee where we're so much closer to family. We're actually only three hours away. Oh, wow. And I will say that it's hard being a coach's wife out here with four kids and not knowing anybody, not having family. It's, it's very, very tough. And then having two littles that are with me all the time and I never have a moment to myself. And now just thinking about God's goodness and moving closer to home and having that that help. It's like, I I know why you've done it. I see because you felt my hurt and my pain. And now. I love that. And uh, I love that you're speaking from the heart because that's what we go through. We're so far from home sometimes. And you're like, God, do you see these moments where, yes. you know, I, I don't know if I can make it. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. You're not getting a break. What do you do? Um, maybe some practical things um, on a consistent basis. What have you made a priority as a coach's wife to make this all work when you don't have help? You don't know anybody. There are no babysitters that you trust yet. Right. Um, the After I put them to bed is when I have my moment. And I hate to stay up late because sometimes they wake up throughout the night. But it's just taking that hour to myself, maybe taking a hot bath and relaxing, reading a book, um, getting on FaceTime with my husband just to talk to him, you know, when he's away or it's just like the peace of talking to him and then just getting in the word, you know, taking that moment. If I get up a few minutes early in the morning time, then, you know, I'll go and sit in my corner and read my Bible or lay in my bed and read before the littles wake up. And the end of the day is when, you know, I, talk to him the most because that's what I have just the silence and the peace but just and sometimes I will ask a friend like if I'm if I'm in that moment where I really truly need it I'll ask a friend if they could just come over for an hour and just me get away um I do a lot of you know grocery pickups now but even just go into the grocery store which is not fun to say like I go to the grocery store just to get a moment but you know, some t- at this moment, that's that's where my life is. And it's OK because it won't last. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So you do. And that's true. You know, what's really hard. I feel like is to go ahead and just ask for help. I, yeah, I struggle with that. I'm like, nope, I'll just keep on. I, I can do it. I can push through yes. and not letting people be there for you. I think that's I a big feel, thing. I feel like when my friends know when I ask that they know they truly yeah. know that I, I need a moment and, and they always step up. So. I've met you in Kansas and you were so steady, you know, and so I think about that, how um, you just always had a peace about you, just real steady, a calmness. I know you don't feel that every single day, but in those, the highs and lows of coaching and being a part and getting jobs, losing jobs, what are some of those things that you feel like that maybe have played a role in the success and the way his career has skyrocketed? Well, I just feel like his, their jobs are so stressful. He doesn't need to come home and see me. Do I stress? Absolutely. All the time. But he doesn't need to feel that from me. He needs to feel the peace and the calmness. I need to be his home. And so I, I try and think about that all the time. Yes, am I overwhelmed? Yes, am I thinking about this and that? But he doesn't need to ne- necessarily feel all of that when he comes home. He needs to feel my calmness because he is the head of our house. He is trying to do whatever he can to take care of our family. And so I just always try and think like, 
I need to be his peace. I need to be his calm. I need to be his home when he comes home. And maybe just a little bit take the stress off of him some. And, you know, I need to be his support. And I, we've been married for a long time. We've been together for a long time. And so we know each other at the end of the day. And so I, I just, I want to be that for him. What are some of those encouraging things you say to him? Is it scripture? Is it just uh, music? What do you, when he's feeling low, what are you using? So if you know John Shaw, he is a, is big on music. He can sing very, very well. And I feel like if you talk to him within an hour, he's probably sung something. And so we like to send music text message throughout the day or um, scriptures are always good. We'll send motivational quotes or just anything like that to to show that we're here and we're thinking about you or I saw this and it made me think of the life that we're living right now or what we're going through. And so we like to do that. And then how do you, how are you approaching raising your children? Um, you obviously, I, I believe from, I remember your story is you, you were raised in one area of the country, right? Pretty much. Yes. And then you're raising your kids all over and they move very quickly. What are some of the things that you're trying to be intentional about, you know, because your raising is so different, but to keep them secure and, and things like that? I mean, how are you approaching this? Um, I mean, you know, different parts of the U.S. teach different things. And so just letting them know that there's different things and we may not agree on some things. We may agree on some things, but just always keeping that foundation and then always being intentional. You know, our, our life is crazy. Dad's going a lot. And so when he's home, it's like making the time for them, taking them up to the school all the time, letting them meet the players that, I mean, they are like little brothers to all those players. And so just, I feel like our foundation, our, our home, our foundation, what we teach, what we preach, you know, it's always the same, no matter where we are and always loving on people, always showing them who you are, never changing for anyone um, is, is what we're big on. And then how do you reach out to the players? I know you talked about going to practice. Is that some of the things that you are very intentional about? Yes. Yes. We, um, we love to go to practice all the time. Our, you know, our boys are very athletic, 11, seven, almost eight, and they love to be around it. They always want to go with daddy. Um, when we were in Arizona, they actually went to year round school. So they would get two weeks off for spring break and they went to Arizona would work with, with dad every day. Oh, wow. And coach fish was great about having the kids around, having the families around. So they loved having the kids. And of course, when they had to go back to school, you know, the kids are at the players are asking where the boys are. And it's like, well, they had to go back to school. <laughs> but yeah, like always talking to them, you know, they have my number if they need me. Um, they don't have family. So like, I just want to be their family too. If they need me, they can call me at any time. If they need a meal, if they need anything, I'm always here. So you know, they, they always have the opportunity and they, they know my phone number. They know where they can contact me if they need me and how we, we keep in touch. Yeah. And, and talk about the moving aspect. I know you visited before, but moving with kids is definitely harder. Um, and then the older they get, I hear it get, keeps getting more and more fun, <laughs> but talk me through some of that. I mean, practically it sounds like you move as soon as possible. I do. Well, when we first started, we did not. Um, we would wait until school was up and then we would move, but then, sorry, I'm sure you know, um, but the more kids we had and the older they got, we need, we need dad around. I need my husband around. And so we move as soon as possible. Now, um, we try and find a house quickly and get everything set up. And, and we do, we move as soon as possible. And do you, do you always buy or rent or it just depends on the situation? We always say that we will not buy in, unless we're somewhere for three plus years. Yeah. Um, and so we have, we've been renting. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So this business is crazy competitive, as you know. Has there ever been a job your husband did not get? You don't have to name it, but what did you say to keep them on track and, and keep them charged up? 
He did. Um, there's been there was one job that we were very excited about and wanting, and we didn't get, which is okay. Like that was not where we were supposed to be. And I think wh- what we do when we hear about a job or go after a job um, is praying. And so if that door is supposed to be open, it will open. If it's not, it will close and we will know. And we don't have hard feelings. We don't get upset about it because that's not where our assignment is. That's true. I love that. Our assignment. Um, Do you have a coach's wife mentor? So I have a couple, I will say. I am Chantry Belton. I know you remember her. Um, She is my go-to, my go-to girl. Um, We don't talk every day, but it's when we do, we pick up right where we were. And we always are talking positive, always praying for each other, always there when the time comes that we need each other the most. And um, I, I remember one thing that she told me when we were in Kansas was, you need to find your village outside of football. Mm. because we move a lot football wives move and if that's your village then you're going to struggle and with the boys being in sports we normally find our village outside um but that was one thing that she told me that we needed to find and it sticks with me everywhere we go I'm like I gotta find my village I gotta find my village whether it's church sporting events or wherever um but yes I love her I have another one, um, Jessica Young. She is at Miami. Her husband is a strength coach. We clicked from day one. And same thing um, as Chantry. It's like you can go to her for motivation when prayer, anything. She'll just text me out of the blue and send me something. And it's like right when you need it. Yeah. And then um, Fawn. Fawn, yes. she's always my positive. I feel like fun never has a negative to say. And so if I need that positive, I know where I can go. She's going to, she's going to be that for me. Um, So I have a couple. Yeah. What are some of those ways that you stay connected during the season? I know you're long distance right now, but you are about to embark on an NFL season a little bit longer than the college season. So what do you guys do? Um, So on Friday nights, we normally have family date night. And then on Saturday nights, we normally have mom and dad date night. And we hardly ever get to go anywhere. And so our date nights consist of ordering takeout, finding a good movie or a board game or something, and just having that time together. Um, We try and do that almost weekly, if not, you know, at least once a month, just to stay connected and have that moment to ourselves. I know right now you can't imagine having a night or a moment alone because you... (laughs) are in the process of moving and all the things. But when you finally get to Nashville, is there something uh, that you're excited about doing uh, or just enjoy doing by yourself or anything you're kind of looking forward to? Uh, Not really. I mean, I think just being family and like having that moment, his parents do very good about coming and, and watching the kids every so often. And so just having them closer even just for me to have my moment by myself, not necessarily with John, um, I think will make a world of a difference for, for me. And last question for you. What do you say is the most rewarding aspect about being a coach's wife? Just, I feel like just the kids that we are able to minister to. Um, being able to minister, period, and, and sharing from the heart is always good. Um, I, I love just being that family, that, that home for, for those boys. Um, and not necessarily boys because we talk to the recruiting girls and just everything. And, and they know that they can, they are always welcome at our house. They can always come over. And so not necessarily just the guys, but I, I love just the ministering aspect of it. All right. Rapid fire. You ready? Okay. I have my book. <laughs> okay. What is the last book you have read? The last book was The Silent Wife, but I am a big Colleen Hoover fan. Very good. I never do blank at a game. Um, I never do superstitious things. Like 
If you could have dinner with someone current or from history other than a family member, who is that going to be? I would probably say Queen Elizabeth. And I know okay. that's probably weird, um, but I just want to read her mind. <laughs> that would be fascinating. <laughs> you get a night alone. What is Brittany Shaw binge watching? Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> it's and so I hard, watch, isn't it? I have watched every season probably 10 times. I know that's awful, but every time a new season comes on, I always try and start back from the beginning. Oh my, just it, it, my husband thinks I'm the craziest person. And it's still running right now, isn't it? Yes, a new season just came out. How many years? This is season 17. <laughs> that's got to be impressive. <laughs> One of the longest, I would imagine. Okay, what is your go to meal to cook? Um, probably taco soup. Mm -hmm. What sport can you beat coach in? Um, everything. <laughs> Softball. There you go. What would be your walk-up song or what was your walk-up song? <laughs> I had to go back for this. Um, my last walk-up song was Turn My Swag On by Soldier Boy. Yes. Yes. That is my son's walk-up song right now. Yes. Jace and Asher have walk-up songs, and we always go back to the old songs. They love them. It's good stuff. Yes, I'm like, that's the best. Brittany, thank you so much for being a part of us. This has been awesome. Yes, thank you for having me. This podcast is brought to you by Brewer of Hope. Brewer of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax-deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Brewer-Hope or online at BrewerofHope.org. For a replay of this episode or previous episodes, visit CoachesWifeLife.org and follow us on social media at CoachesWifeLife.